today we're going to do the rotation on a 4 inch CP5000 valve or what Maxon designates now as the 400 CMA11. Now the indicator window which is going to be here on this side of the valve is where the operator will be looking to tell whether the valve is open or closed and there's an open shut indicator window right here. Now to determine what top assembly position that is desired while you're looking at the window you look at the bottom and the casting on the on the valve body to see which way the arrow is pointing and that's the direction of your top assembly. So right now as I look at the window the arrow is pointing to the right so this would be top assembly position right. It's available in four different positions right, left, away, and toward. And today we're going to do 180 degree rotation to get this top assembly in position left. It's ideal to do the top assembly rotation on a bench unit like this in, in the vice grip. Uh, you can do it installed into the pipe, but as you can see, the top assembly of the Maxon valve is a lot deeper. Uh, so when you swing the valve around to the top, uh, to the correct top assembly position, you want to make sure you're giving yourself adequate clearance. Uh, you also want to make sure that you unhook any kind of electrical connections that you may have going through. Uh, this valve is a stock valve, so we haven't hooked that up yet, so we're free and clear there. But of course, you want to make sure that you have power off to the valve and that you unhook any of the uh, wiring going to the valve. Now, the first step in the top assembly rotation procedure is to loosen these two bolts that we have underneath. Now, these bolts um, are, uh, they depending upon the size of the valve, take a different Allen wrench to loosen them up. On this one, we're using a 5 sixteenths. And the key here is that you want to, this, this screw holds the top assembly to the valve body. Uh, you want to only just back this out to about a quarter of an inch just to break that separation. Now I've loosened the bolts from the bottom of the valve body that connect it to the top assembly. Now, in the instructions, it says not to uh, only remove about a quarter of an inch, but uh, when I did this, the screw fell out or the bolt fell out. Uh, that's okay, just make sure that you don't lose that. And I'm just gonna take the other one out here just to make sure that I don't have any clearance issues when I rotate this valve body. So now I am holding this valve body on, and it's incredibly important that you continue to hold the valve body on and make sure that the top assembly and the uh, valve body are in connection with each other and you don't lift up too high. If you lift up too high on the top assembly, it could disengage some internal components that would not be repairable in the field. So now that we have this loose, I'm able to start the rotation procedure. So keeping the valve, the top assembly and the valve body in connection or connected to each other, I'm just going to slowly turn the top assembly. Again, making sure that I keep contact between the valve body and the top assembly. And we're going to go a full 180 degrees on this one. So this is now the top assembly position left, but what Maxon recommends um, is that we over rotate past the desired position by about 30 degrees. So we'll do that now. And then we'll come back to the desired position. Now it may seem like an odd step, but it's very important in that this takes some of the torque off the return spring inside the top assembly. Um, I'll go through and connect the bolts back up to secure the top assembly back onto the valve body and then we'll open up the side axis cover plate just to make sure that everything's aligned properly. So the last step in the rotation procedure is just to cycle the valve a couple of times just to make sure that everything is lining up properly. I removed the side axis cover plate just so that you can see the inside a little bit better and what you want to make sure of is that on the inside this is the roller arm or the rocker arm. It's got a little wheel at the end of it, and that wheel sits on top of the pedestal. You want to make sure that that wheel is sitting at the center of the pedestal, and that'll confirm that the valve is aligned properly. If it seems like it's out of whack, and if it's off skew a little bit, it could be that there's some additional torque on this return spring. What you have to do is get in there with uh, needle nose pliers and just manually give it a little turn uh, to make sure that lines up properly.
We'll go through and cycle the valve now and see how it looks. If you plan on rotating one of these valves, I highly recommend that you read through the instructions that are going to be detailed in the comments below. Uh, read through those very carefully, just making sure that number one, you're keeping the power off of the valve while you do the rotation. Number two, you do not lift up on the top assembly more than a quarter of inch. And number three, rotating the valve 30 degrees past the desired position before securing it back in place. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me or reach out to your local Maxon representative if you're outside of the Lessman territory. And thanks for watching.